Hey guys, we've had our Starlink version 2 satellite dish now for two weeks and I've got to say it's exceeded our expectations. So today we're going to review the system performance, talk about some of the details of the app, go over two weeks worth of random speed tests, answer the top 10 viewer questions, and also show you this really cool real-time Starlink satellite map that I found on the web. Streaming performance is pretty much flawless with this system. We really notice a big difference in the TV picture quality. It is crystal clear HD. There is no buffering whatsoever whenever we're streaming and really it's no wonder because the service that we used to have was called visible it was only getting around 5 to 15 megabits per second so really slow and now with Starlink we're getting around 200 to 300 megabits per second so as you can imagine we are just thrilled with this new system so in the app there's a tab for system outages that covers any outages that have occurred over the past 12 hours and really there's very few of those 16 seconds at the most for any outage that we've seen and most times that we check there's no outages at all and when there is an outage you really don't even notice that one has occurred there's also a visibility tool in the starlink app that you can use and you're going to use that to check for any obstructions and make sure that you find the right installation location that will deliver the best service pretty easy to use you just click on that tool you enable your camera so Starlink can use your camera and then you'll just use your phone to check to see if there are any obstructions in the area this next tab is for any connected devices to your Starlink Wi-Fi network and we usually have about 10 to 12 devices connected at any one time typically things like our Sonos smart speakers our TVs phones tablets laptop security cameras etc and we have not had any issues connecting any devices to the network. In the app settings portion of the tab, there's a place there where you can split the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz router wireless bands if you want to. You can also enable WPA3 security. You may bypass the Starlink router if you want to. You can use your own router with a network adapter and use your router in lieu of the Starlink router. There's also a checkbox here to stow your Starlink, which basically when you click on that and save it, it will tilt the Starlink for shipping and or storage. Uh, there's also a factory reset that clears the Wi-Fi, network name, password, and other settings. The last section here is app support, and that is where they list frequently asked questions. There is a search bar there as well that you can use to search for the answer that you're looking for. Just type in the keyword and it should bring up a question and answer for that keyword. Before we get into the speed test and the viewer question and answers, I wanted to mention the first Starlink video that we did in case you haven't seen it yet. Check it out here in the link above. This is where we do the unboxing and setup of our Starlink, and if you didn't know it yet, we're going to be traveling out west for eight months, where we'll be moving locations weekly and giving updates on how well the Starlink is or isn't working for us out on the road. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell below to ensure you get notified each time we post an update. We've also created a Starlink playlist on our homepage where you can view all of our Starlink related videos. So all that being said, I want to make it perfectly clear that when we move from our current registered location, we won't be guaranteed service by Starlink in the new location. Here's Starlink's policy statement. Service is only guaranteed at the service address on your order. If you move Starlink outside of its assigned area, a satellite may not be scheduled to serve Starlink and you may not receive internet or may receive degraded service. So you may be wondering, why are we taking this risk? Why are we spending this money and taking this risk? Well, it's our belief that Starlink is the future of high-speed, reliable internet for people who travel full-time like we do and even if for some reason the service isn't perfect right now we do believe that it will be in the very near future so this leads right into the next segment here is a real-time starlink satellite map that also shows the base stations or ground stations and i'm going to put the link in the description below so you guys can access it for yourselves this not only shows the ground stations but it shows the starlink satellites moving in real time as they circle the globe the one thing that makes us hopeful of obtaining service while we're traveling is that most of the U.S. appears to be covered right now 
both by satellites and ground stations. It is reported that you need to be within approximately 500 miles of a ground station to get coverage. Right now where we're located on the Gulf in Texas, we're about 123 miles to the Boca Chica ground station, about 221 miles to Hampshire, Texas, and 146 miles to New Braunfels, Texas. So we're well within that 500 mile range. So here are some examples of states with ground stations and the coverage. Texas currently has six, but Texas is a really huge state, right? And New Mexico has zero, Arizona has one, Utah one, Colorado one, Wyoming one, Montana two, Nevada one. But if you look at the width of some of these states, they're not even 500 miles across. New Mexico is approximately 350 miles wide. Colorado is approximately 375 miles wide. So if you take that into account, anywhere you are in the state, you're probably going to be within 500 miles of a ground station. A lot of this is theory right now. However, we have heard of some people in Canada who have had success moving their dishes and we're really excited to test this out. Okay, now on to the speed test. So we charted 40 speed tests over the past two weeks. The average download speed that we had was 234 megabits per second. The low was 13, which those numbers, those low numbers only came through a couple times. The high number was 348, and we had a lot more high numbers than we did low numbers there. I think there was maybe just a glitch there with the low numbers, because after I tested it a few minutes later, the numbers jumped back up. The upload average was 26, a low of two, a high of 48. Not really great for upload, 26 average. That's probably more on the line of a cell phone. Ping test, we had an average of 43 and that's really not too bad. An exceptional ping test is 20 milliseconds. Very good ping would be anywhere from 50 to 100 milliseconds. The low was 33, high was 62. Jitter, you wanna be below 30 milliseconds. We had an average of eight, low 0.31, high was 58. Packet loss, you wanna be below 1%. We had an average of 0.5, low of zero, high of 16. So compare that to our cell phone with Verizon, and the average for Verizon was 46 megabits per second download, 16 upload 47 milliseconds ping jitter 7 milliseconds and packet loss was zero and just for laughs we did a speed test with our old visible phone it was pretty comical seven megabits per second download six megabits per second up 157 milliseconds on the ping which is just god awful 70 milliseconds of jitter and packet loss was zero not gonna miss visible. Okay, here are our top 10 viewer questions and answers. First one on the list, how well does Starlink work on a cloudy, windy, or rainy day? Well, we haven't had any rain yet, but we do know of someone who has a Starlink and has been through some rain, and they said that it did degrade the service a little bit, but they were still running speeds in 100 and 200 megabits per second. We have had clouds and high winds while we've been here over the past two weeks, and Starlink has worked pretty well in both those scenarios. The clouds didn't really affect it much. It was ranging in the 100, 200 megabits per second, and the day with the really high winds, we had up to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, and it actually worked really well in the wind. I heard the original dish did not do so well in the wind, but ours did. We did have clear skies that day, even though the winds were kicked up that high, and Starlink was actually at its highest rate at 348 megabits per second that day. Is Starlink available outside of the United States? Yes, if you go onto that Starlink satellite map website and you look around on the globe there, you're gonna see cells. Anywhere where there are cells and ground stations, that is where Starlink is going to be currently available. If you're in a country that does not have any cells or ground stations right now on that map, then go to Starlink's website enter your address in the address search bar, you'll hit order, that'll take you to the next page, it won't actually order it, and that will tell you the expected date when service will be available in your area. Is there an ethernet port on the router? Yes and no. The old dish does have an ethernet port built into the router, the new dish does not have one. So if you have the new dish and you want to have an ethernet connection, you'll have to buy an adapter from Starlink, and I think it's like maybe 20 bucks. Do you have to use the Starlink Wi-Fi router? No, you do not. If you want to, you can use that bypass mode and then use your own router. So if you have a high dollar router that you want to keep, you can do that. You do just need to have that ethernet adapter with the new dish 
in order to make that happen. Can you leave Starlink mounted on your vehicle while going down the road? Not right now, no. Uh, they are eventually going to come out with a mobile unit that can be mounted to your truck, a camper, whatever, any type of vehicle, and you'll be able to use Starlink service as you drive down the road, but that is not able to be done right now. So definitely take down the Starlink before you drive down the road with it. What ways can the wire be ran into an RV? Right now, we just have our wire ran in through the wet bay. So there's an opening where our hose goes up into the basement of the RV and we ran the wire up through there and into the basement. And that's where we keep the router right now. We've got it plugged in in the basement. We are going to eventually mount it permanently on our roof. We have a roof mount on order from Starlink that's back ordered right now. Once we have that, we'll mount it on the roof and then we're gonna route it down through our refrigerator vent into the RV. Another way you could route it in from the roof is obviously by drilling a hole and placing a weatherproof junction box up there and then route the wire down into the RV. The one last way you could do it is routing it through the weather stripping on your slide of your RV. Now, this is the way one of our friends did it and he says that it's working pretty well for him. Just make sure that there's no way that water can intrude if you get some type of heavy rainstorm that comes through with high winds that might push water through at that location. How long did it take us to get our dish? Four and a half months. So we ordered it on August 1st, received it on December 15th, and we actually weren't supposed to get it that quickly. We originally had it slated to ship to the address where we have our mail service. However, Starlink had pushed back the date, so we decided to try to have it shipped down here to our RV park where we're currently located, and they shipped it out right away. So that might be an option for you if you're waiting for Starlink and you have the possibility of shipping it somewhere else, to maybe to a friend who can then ship it back to you. You may be able to get your Starlink dish quicker that way. How much power does it use? We actually covered that in the last video and came up with 68 watts when we had it plugged into our inverter. However, one of our viewers did point out to us that there is some loss due to the inverter's inefficiency. Our particular inverter is 90% efficiency, so there's 10% efficiency loss. And after taking that into account, we found out that the Starlink uses 61.2 watts. Can service be paused? No, per Starlink at this time, your subscription can only be canceled, not paused or delayed. Are there data caps? No, unbelievably there are no data caps, which is great because most services do have data caps like cellular, cable, anything like that. They typically have data caps and Starlink does not. That's it for today's video. However, don't go anywhere because next week we're gonna take our Starlink dish. We're gonna drive maybe an hour or so away change the location on the app, see how that works out as a test. We're gonna use a Jackery 200 watt power station to power it up while we're out remote somewhere. Please let us know in the comments below if you have any questions that we may have not reviewed today or if you have any comments and we'll answer any questions to the best of our ability. Otherwise, we'll see you next week.